Hi, my name's Ollie. I'm a greengrocer and a farmer and I've started a farm to learn how to run a successful farm business. It feels good at the moment, I feel quite relaxed. It's a Jubilee bank holiday weekend and I've had about two days of not stressing about the jobs that I was trying to do beforehand. My squash corner of the field is all planted and in my tunnel it's noticeable how much less plants in trays I've got to plant out. I've sown some more things but it's just a trickle to keep on top of. I've been relaxing really, which is, makes a change from the last month, month and a half. Also nicely, we had a bit of a thunderstorm last night and we had a lot of rain. So the night before last we had half an inch of rain and last night I would probably venture to guess that we had a bit more. With most things in the ground, that's a great thing. I think they'll really take off and so will the weeds, but it'll bed them in nicely and then everything can get underway. Harvests are getting much bigger, especially for things like peas, because it's been very warm. So for peas yesterday, I gave myself about half an hour to do a picking before I went to work, but it took me almost 45 minutes to pick two kilos of Mange 2 peas. That's a good thing, I suppose. I don't mind picking them, um, and the harvests are getting a bit bigger, my income's improving, so that's really exciting. I'm excited to get into this one, so enjoy. kindly gave me yesterday about 40 or 50 tomato plants to help fill up this tunnel because it's the first time I've had a tunnel I didn't quite know how many plants it would fill up um, my bad I guess but they've also given me some extra chilies, some peppers, some aubergines and some courgettes I didn't have to pay but because I'm making tomato puree with these tomatoes I have to reward them no it's not reward them I have to return the favour later in the year when I've got some correct to give away. Basil to be planted in between tomatoes because they like warmth, I know that. Maybe it'll compete, I don't know, but I'm going to try it, see what happens. Unexpected issue, I suppose. All these plants that I've got, I didn't know where to put them, so I had to spend a bit of time just relaxing, walking around and thinking where I could fit the courgettes, thinking where I could put the extra tomatoes. Yeah, taking a bit of time. <laughs> so, just having a little bit of fun making something outside the tunnel. And the fact that there's two tunnels here and a little uh, tunnel, again I guess, in the middle, it captures sun really nicely. I just opened this bag of compost. It was sitting on an ant's nest and they've actually gone into the bag of compost. And that is their nest, all their eggs, all their lava, and all these ants. It's nuts.
One of the things I haven't mentioned much about yet is water and where my water's coming from. It's a bit of a hassle at the moment because there's a well at the back of the house with a little pump and a tap on it. So I take all these barrels, I can get about 90 litres in one wheelbarrow, fill them up and then walk them over here. My parents are actually working on a building site at the moment, so we have the opportunity to do a bit of groundwork and get a pipe um, across the house over here. It won't have pressure, but it'll be a tap and I can fill up all my buckets here rather than walking them all over. It takes time and energy. We'll see how it changes. I love your outfit, Dan. Really suits you. Thank you, the boots by Ollie. <laughs> I've collected buckets over the last three or so weeks from Scoop, um, the cooperative where we work. It's about 15 or 20 buckets. I just haven't been able to keep up with it because of the size of this compost heap. So we're going to get through as many as we can today. Thanks, Dan. No worries. It's all right. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough for now. <laughs> oh, I got it. Yeah, these are old. These are old buckets. Like that. That's disgusting. <laughs> what have you got there, Dan? We have oil. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Work of art, Dan. And it took about 20 minutes. Yeah. Come on then, say hello. Hi. <laughs> Tell me about your Soviet tool. Why is it an improvement on what I've got? Um, it's thicker, like the blade's thicker, and it's got CCP on. Which means the Soviet Union. Yeah, it does. Does it, does it make it more easier to toil with, the fact that it's got a Soviet unit symbol? No, it's because it's just like easier than this one. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm giving you that one. I can donate because I've got two. <laughs> you can have it, I don't care. I've got a new one. Come on, let's go and have a look at the chickens. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Thanks for your help, guys. Oh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I want to talk quickly about overheads and costs. Um, currently, I've put six thousand pounds into this project. Some of the overheads that I've got our rent. I don't rent the land, it's my parents' land and they've kindly supported me for the first two years rent free. I pay rent to live at home, that's £250 a month. I still have my job, which is working at Scoop, the cooperative, and I work four shifts a week, that's 20 hours a week, and that brings in about £1,000 a month, and that is how I'm funding this. 
So obviously I wouldn't be able to do it without the support of my parents because if rents were as they should have been in Jersey, um, I'd be spending most of my money on rent. So I'm really grateful to be living at home and have their support. My current financial position is that as I get money each month, I just spend it. I spend it on buying the things that I need, buying plants, still paying off some of my uh, bigger payments, and also having a bit of a life. I think that's still important. So I don't put everything just into here and, and just eat my own food. I actually, I do go and see friends and I do go and spend a bit of money elsewhere. So no money at the moment. I've sold about 300 pounds worth of produce. Hopefully that will increase dramatically. And as soon as eggs start coming in, that'll bring about 15 pounds in a day. So that's gonna be very helpful. I have the best food available and I have a great quality of life. So, you know, I'm only poor in one sense. You know, I recently took a loan out from my dad, 500 pounds, just to help pay off the chickens. I have the, the safety and security of knowing that they're there, they're behind me, so that I probably won't starve if I run out of money. But there is also the incentive that they don't want to just give me money because they want me to earn it and I think that's a good thing and it will provide a livelihood for me and make me able to keep doing it and keep growing great food so I just watched back my video that I made on money and explaining my current financial position and I suppose what I'm trying to address is that I've got so much support from my parents I wouldn't be able to do this without them because especially in Jersey where the cost of living is so high I have the opportunity to become a farmer you know a vocation that doesn't bring in a lot of money I've got the support of my parents and that's how I'm able to do it and I'm, I'm passionate about it and I'm willing to live a fairly simple life and I'm willing to stay at home whilst I can begin to support myself but does it take someone with the support of his parents who who have a house for him to live in uh, land for him to use to make it work is that what we're telling in the next generation of young people that oh, actually you can't become a farmer unless you have these things behind you, these things backing you up, because that's pretty inaccessible. Um, and I think that there are systems out there that show people how to become farmers and be efficient and to be profitable, but people aren't being encouraged to move in that direction. I think that's a real problem. Scene one, action. <clears throat> Should we go and get the chicken? Let's go get the chicken. Yeah. Hi YouTubers, don't you think that Ollie has like a really like slow, calm walk? It's almost like he's a farmer in the making. Hello. Got the chicken. I think it's really funny, you know, we've got chickens in the field and this is like one of them. Well, without without all the feathers and obviously it's not alive. Let's see if it's still on fire. I can see it blazing. Woohoo! You know the hard bit about talking on camera is like you think about the camera and it's like you actually have to just pretend that it's not there. And yeah. Have the same conversations that you would. That's hard. It is hard. <laughs> What would you reckon of the first Loma barbecue experience? You know, people are going to be paying fortune for this experience in the future. 
Can I answer it once I've eaten? No, no, no. At the Go on, give us a hungry answer then. Yeah, it's nice. I like the setting. I think it's really peaceful here. Boring. Okay. Come on. Um, <laughs> I know, I can't think. <laughs> I need to eat first. <laughs>